in order to better support Indigenous people with disabilities in Ontario. Welcome to the webinar. Um, again, I'm just going to ask people to turn off your microphone if you are not presenting. And Elizabeth, please go to the next slide. So welcome again to our webinar, Gary Mokowski, deaf politician, um, for his story. So um, we're going to start off with the author of the biography, Richard Bentugo, followed by Gary Mokowski's presentation. After that, we have um, some time, time set aside for questions and answers. And then we would do the wrap up and thank you. I will be moderating the questions and answers. You will be able to put your question in the chat or um, you'll be able to ask your question to the interpreter. Um, please remember to pin the interpreter video if that is a service that you are requiring for the workshop. And now, Richard, it's my pleasure to um, introduce you, the author of this book, Many Years in the Making. Over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Richard Meduno, and uh, this is my presentation, How I Wrote the Book. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I met Gary in East York in the fall of 1993. And uh, when I met Gary, uh, we were both living in East York, uh, which is a section of Toronto. And um, it was the fall. And by that time, Gary had been an MPP, a member of provincial parliament uh, for three years. And earlier in that year, 1993, my daughter Miranda was 17 months old and she had just been diagnosed as profoundly deaf. And uh, within a few months, uh, my wife and I started learning American Sign Language and uh, learning about deafness and the deaf community. And we enrolled Miranda in the Bob Rumble Center for the Deaf Preschool, uh, BRCD for short. And that's where deaf children and hearing children of deaf parents were invited to attend. And at uh, BRCD, a teacher informed us that Gary Makowski's son attended the school and we might want to consider carpooling our kids because uh, his family lived in the same area. Well, it turned out Gary and his family lived on the same street and we were literally two blocks away from each other. Um, next slide, please. So, how did a deaf guy get elected? Uh, that's what I wanted to know uh, when I met Gary. Uh, his story inspired me. And even before he asked me to, uh, to be his biographer, I was documenting uh, who he was and how he was successfully making his way in the world. I saw him as a role model for my daughter. And it was extremely important for me to uh, document uh, and record his achievements so that I could use his experiences as a guide for Miranda. And when I met Gary and uh, learned that he was a politician, my first question was the same one that everyone who's hearing I think has, is how did a deaf guy get elected? And that is actually the core question that his biography needed to answer. Uh, next slide, please. So countless hours researching and interviewing. Uh, so after signing the book contract with the publisher to write Gary's biography 25 years ago, I had high hopes of seeing my first book in print within a year or two. And I spent countless hours researching and interviewing Gary and the major uh, people in his life, personal and political uh, and professional. And that included Bob Ray, the former leader of the NDP, the New Democratic Party, uh, who was the former premier of Ontario, and he's now uh, Canada's ambassador to the United Nations. So uh, as part of my research, I followed Gary around on the 1995 campaign trail, documenting and learning about how it compared to 
the first campaign, the 1991, that got him elected. And in order to write somebody's biography, uh, the writer needs to really dig into years of documentation and correspondence and any paperwork uh, that will re reveal details about the subject's life. And so I did this. And also I needed to interview as many people as possible for the same reason. So I connected with Gary's family uh, his wife, his ex-wife, his siblings, his parents, Gary's childhood friends and teachers, Gary's college friends and professors, uh, Gary's professional contacts, his former managers and co-workers and deaf community leaders, and of course, Gary's uh, NDP uh, Queens Park uh, political colleagues. That included uh, Bob Ray, and, and there's a picture you can see of Bob Ray uh, celebrating his victory, and the picture above it is Gary and Karen, his, his second wife, and that's in 1995. And then there's a photo of all, or a lot of the tapes that I recorded of the interviews, some of its video, a lot of its audio, and that just gives you an idea of the kind of research that, that, that this uh, project entailed. Uh, next slide, please. So, noteworthy events. So in the early years of writing Gary's biography, uh, I had the good fortune of witnessing and participating in a number of noteworthy events. And as I mentioned before, I tracked Gary in his re-election campaign. You know, that included going door to door and going to community events like this. There's a photo of the park event there. And uh, I participated as a campaign volunteer for Gary as well as the NDP. And uh, at one point I was in a uh, fundraiser and I put my uh, theater degree to work and I impersonated Bob Ray. And there's a photo of me trying to look and act like Bob Ray shaking uh, Gary's hand at this fundraiser. Now, as a landed immigrant of the US, um, I needed to become a citizen uh, to vote in the election. So I got Canadian citizenship. And to this day, I'm a dual citizen. And um, I'm current, by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm in San Diego right now. And um, uh, immediately following the election in 1995, uh, the, unfortunately, uh, the NDP and Gary lost, I went on a road trip with Gary to Washington, D.C., where I visited Gallaudet University, where Gary went. And uh, for the first time, uh, that was my first visit, and I was introduced to many of Gary's friends and uh, then a year later, I moved my young family to California, though I was still working on the book. And uh, this was so that Miranda could attend the California School for the Deaf in Fremont. And at that time, it was considered one of the best deaf schools in the world. So next slide, please. So um, publishing disappointments and achievements. So, <laughs> so looking back over the last 25 years, I've had a number of uh, publishing disappointments and achievements before finally getting Deaf Politician published. And in 1996, uh, after a couple of years of working on the book, uh, the manuscript, uh, the original uh, publisher decided not to print Gary's biography because he was no longer an MPP and uh, interest had died down. Uh, so um, that was very disappointing, of course. Uh, Gallaudet University Press was another publisher that had brief interest in the manuscript, uh, but they decided not to publish as well. So over the preceding years, I would continue to polish and edit the manuscript and query other publishers, including Canadian publishers, uh, without any success. But uh, I didn't want Gary's story to go by the wayside. So that's, uh, after about four or five years, I, I went back to my theater roots and I adapted the manuscript into a play. I titled the play Bigger Dreams. And then after years of no success in getting theaters interested in producing the play, in 2003, I decided to self-publish uh, Bigger Dreams. And you can see there's a picture of the, co uh, the cover uh, on, on, the, on the page, on the slide. And uh, not a lot of copies were purchased, which was fine, uh, but there was documentation of Gary's story out there and available to the public, which is uh, what I was just 
trying to do all along. Fortunately, in 2005, I had some success. Gullet at University Press published my memoir, uh, Deaf Daughter, Hearing Father. You can see a photo of the cover there. And um, this book was about raising Miranda. And I have many mentions of Gary in that memoir. So now that brings us 15 years later to our current uh, wonderful pandemic time. And I had some free time and decided to work on Gary's biography again. And when I realized we were coming up on the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as the 30th anniversary of Gary's election, I thought this would be the perfect time to publish the manuscript. And fortunately, there's a tool uh, that makes it very easy. If Amazon has an has a app called Kindle Direct Publishing, which allowed me to, uh, to publish a book and an ebook. So here at last, finally now, after 25 years, many drafts, we have a published book. <laughs> and I just want everyone to know that Gary and I are not getting rich from book sales. And unless we sell millions of copies, that's just not gonna happen. So I just wanna take that out. So I'm fine with that. This project was never about becoming rich and famous. It's always been a labor of love. And uh, it was about getting Gary's story out there and known to the hearing world and the deaf community to inspire and to educate everyone about what deaf people can achieve. Next slide, please. And so with that, I would ask you to buy the book on Amazon <laughs> as my one pitch. And I want to, uh, if you have questions, you can certainly reach out to us via uh, my email address or Gary's website, which are listed there. And uh, I want to also wish the Canadians happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, thank you very much. I'm finished. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. This is Tracy O'Dell speaking. Um, I am the president of Citizens with Disabilities Ontario. Um, and I met Gary many years ago in my work with the provincial government. Then I was working on special education policy. And it's my pleasure to um, turn this meeting over to Gary now to um, tell us about his story. Over to you, Gary. Hello, everyone. Wow. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, uh, that's an inspiring story. And